Hey everyone, Mr. Mom Collectibles. I am back with another video. And today I want to talk about something that is often looked down upon in the hobby of hot toys, and that's flipping them for profit. Is it good? Is it bad? Indifferent? Let me know your thoughts. Let's jump into it. All right, so like I said, this is going to be a relatively quick video, but I want to talk about the idea of flipping hot toys for profit and kind of get your thoughts about it in the comments section below. Definitely make sure to drop a like on this video. But what I did was I just did a quick search on eBay uh, or Evil Bay, as some may call, but I did Hot Toys Artisan. And what I did was I searched this by sold listings. Now, the Artisan series is like I've made multiple videos on this series specifically. And, you know, it's something interesting because we don't have these in hand. And I do think that they're overpriced. Like I said, I, I've made I've talked about it numerous times. And I think a lot of collectors are really clamoring to get these figures in hand to understand what the qualities are of these are. Are these going to compete with in art? Where do they fall short? Where do, do these uh, figures exceed? We don't have them yet, but collectors want them. But it's not stopping people from selling them at a high rate high price and people buying them for that price and like i said we just go through here and look at the sold listings now typically you know people call it scalping things like that but is it hot toys fault for doing this for making these things exclusive driving the price up making them limited i think so i don't really have fault in my opinion you're just going to get my take on this i don't have fault for people making money honestly i don't i think that the hobby evolves and in doing so collectors have to evolve you have to find new ways to fund your collection. Now, a lot of people are going to look down on that and say, well, people are buying two or three and reselling them. That's 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 messed up for the hobby. I mean, here's my whole thing, and I've always said this. If people are willing to pay the price, people are going to sell it for that price. That's just what it is. So, like, for example, like the, the, the Umber Trooper, a trooper, black and yellow, that was going for six, seven, eight hundred dollars People were paying those prices. So why are people not going to sell them for those prices? Is it wrong? I mean, I don't have to tell you. I mean, no one's going to say no to money. So if you can get more money out of something and people are willing to buy it, I mean, what's I mean, I don't know what's the harm in that. You know, if people like I said, if people are willing to pay for it, you, you can't fault the, the you know, someone selling it for that price. And like right here, like an artisan low key pre order. Um, it's not even out yet. Seven hundred ninety nine dollars that it, it shipped, you know, sold for. Uh, darks the the light side Anakin pre-sale nine hundred and ninety nine dollars it sold for the Luke Skywalker Dark Empire it didn't sell for eight fifty they accepted an offer but you can probably assume it was higher than what retail was uh pre-sale like I said another one nine ninety nine nine twenty five eight fifty for the Loki which is extremely overpriced. But someone was willing to pay $850 plus $25, $875 for this artisan Loki. Someone was willing to pay that. So someone sold it for that. I mean, at the end of the day, no one forces people to buy this stuff. But you can look at these prices, like $800. Like, this shot up pretty fast, the Anakin Skywalker. I remember when that sold out, the aftermarket trading price on it was absolutely insane. And Jack Sparrow, $1,000, $1,000. A thousand dollars for a Jack Sparrow, artisan Jack Sparrow, eight ninety nine. Best offer, best offer accepted. Thousand dollars, Anakin. These are May third. These are just in, you know a month ago. So these prices are insane. And then, like I said, it's eBay. People are, oh well, you know those prices are gonna be high. It is what it is. They're selling it. People are buying it. But I just feel like you know collectors are trying to find new ways to fund the hobby now. Obviously, we don't know all of these people who these people are. If these are collectors that are selling them to put the monies back into their collection, it is what it is. I mean, they're just trying to find new ways. Hot Toys is kind of setting the precedent by making quote unquote exclusive figures supposedly limited to 2,000, 3,000. Are these figures worth the value? In my opinion, no, they're not. But I think Hot Toys, by making them exclusive, they're driving the price up in that sense. They're taking figures that I think are bait, you know, nothing to advance like this Luke Skywalker. Uh, if you look at the video comparison of the sculpted to the rooted, there isn't that much big of a difference for like a $200 upcharge for the artisan figure. Uh, the Anakin Skywalker, you know, for what it came with for it to be 500 or 450. And then now it's going for a thousand dollars. 
It's all about that exclusivity. Now, how's that figure going to be when it comes out? I don't, you know, we don't know. This Loki right here, you know, the Loki, once again, I mean, it really, you got to be a Loki fan to spend that kind of money on that kind of stuff. And so I think it's just that exclusivity thing. I think when people get these figures in hand, that's what the real telltale sign is. And it's not just the artisan series. It's also the exclusives. All those Star Wars drops that they did, you know, the the, the Obi-Wan Kenobi, the Triple Zero, things like that. They're doing it the same way with those. Those are going for prices afterward you know, on the aftermarket just as high. Not this high, but nevertheless, people are going in there. They're grabbing these things up because they know people are going to buy them. But I am interested to know what your thoughts are below. For me, like I said, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, the way that I always felt collecting was in general, you're never going to get everything you want for the price that you want. So I think when you see the market changing and you see where things are going, uh, I think you have to smarten up a little bit and try to save your money elsewhere. So what do I mean by that? I mean, you know, the figures that you're going to get that aren't exclusives, you got to try to get savings on them. And an example for me would be the Multiverse of Madness Scarlet Witch. I was able to find that brand new sealed from a local website for $2.99 shipped, no tax, no shipping. And I know that piece goes well over $300 on SciShow. And then if you add tax and shipping on, I think I end up saving like $60, $70 bucks on that figure buying it that way and so if i multitude those savings over and over again you know that adds up and i think as collectors you have to realize that for exclusives there's a high possibility you're going to pay over no one wants to but that is just what the reality is you're going to probably pay over on a couple exclusives you're going to hit the jackpot and get them on sideshow for retail there's no doubt about it but if you want something like this you're going to have to pay a little more but I think it balances itself out if you can find other stuff for a better price. If you're buying everything at Sideshow with really no savings, and then you're doing this, you're going to kill yourself financially and burn out because you're just dumping money into this left and right. So I think that, like I said, Hot Toys is kind of changing the direction a little bit. And the secondary market is showing that with these exclusives, they're reacting. And, you know, it's definitely a seller's market. People are, I think, profiting off of this. The sellers are really making out, in my opinion. But as the buyers, you have to try to balance it and be smart is the best thing I can say. Um, that's not original advice. Anybody can say that. It's just, uh, it's going to be interesting when, for example, the artisans, when we finally get that Joker and the Luke Scott, and the, I'm sorry, the Anakin Skywalker in hand, will the market value still maintain or drop because of the quality of what that is? It'll be interesting to see that. And that was something that I always had concerns about with the artisans because Hot Toys just keeps pumping out artisan after artisan, but yet we don't have one in hand to understand what the true value of the figure is. Right now, all we can judge it on is the financial value and what we're getting for it when they offer you a sculpted and a rooted, like the Luke Skywalker. In my opinion, you know, you could be a huge fan of this of this Dark Empire. That's fantastic. But for the everyday collector that's just, you know, looking at it, I don't see the financial value going from the sculpted to the artist and spending that extra 150, I think 200 it was. Same thing with the Loki. I just didn't see the financial benefit going from the sculpted to the rooted and paying like that much money, more money for it. I didn't, uh, you know, that's just my opinion. But if you're a fan of them, I can understand that. Like the Jack Sparrow, I was able to secure the Jack Sparrow at the retail price. Is it worth $1,000? I personally don't think so. I think this is the best artisan figure they've done yet, but is it worth 1000 No, I don't think any figure is worth that kind of money. But nevertheless, to sum up this video, I don't have anything wrong with collectors buying stuff and reselling them to try to help fund the collection. I just, I, I personally don't, because I think it all in one way or another balances itself out. And I think the only way to combat that is if people start speaking with their wallets and not paying these prices. But when sellers see these prices, they're going to continue charging them. So I have no fault on the sellers. It's up to the buyers to decide whether or not they want to continue paying these prices or just letting them go. And at the end of the day, 
Hot Toys also is a little bit of thrown into the mix because of them making the you know making it an exclusive thing. So it's a perpetual cycle of multiple variables, but it's something that I don't see ending anytime soon. And so, like I said, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Drop a like on this video. Please consider subscribing to the channel if this is your first time. But let me know, like I said in the comments, what your thoughts are about uh, reselling or flipping figures. But until then, this is Mr. Mom Collectibles saying take care, and I will see you guys in the next video. Acknowledge me.